everybody seemed to love version one so much. So I released version two. What's going on you guys? My name is Cisco. And if you didn't see about October of last year, I was able to release my own airsoft gun, the MGC4. And that was actually a really big dream of mine come true. And it sold really well and Lancer Tactical and you guys demanded that we come out with another model. So here we are in 2023 with the Airsoft GI MGC4 Mark II. So if you don't know about the MGC4, it stands for Mail Gang Carbine 4, as in M4. And this was a brainchild of myself and you guys, the Mail Gang. And one day Lancer Tactical actually hit us up and they said, hey, you wanna make your own airsoft gun? I said, what, really? And they said, yeah. Yeah, you can make your own airsoft gun. We'll give you access to our factory and stuff. We're like, oh, sweet. And that's where the MGC4 Mark I came to place. And Lancer Tactical loved how well it came out. They said, hey, you wanna make another one? Do I? Do I wanna make another one? You bet your sweet ass I did. So I told them, yes. The MGC4 Mark I was a fantastic gun. It was great, but it wasn't perfect. And you guys that purchased it gave us some feedback on how we can enhance the user experience. So we took all of that and we implemented it into the Mark II. So let's see what all of us, everybody together came up with. So the first thing you notice is that the MGC4 Mark II is a little bit longer. With the original MGC4 Mark I, it was a 10.5 inch barrel. And a lot of you guys said, we want it longer. Oh, we want it a little bit longer. So with the Mark II, we decided to add a 14 inch barrel. Now, with the gun itself, you do get a full metal build. Why? Because I like it. I like full metal, okay? As you can see on the lower receiver, you will see our tasteful Mail Gang logo engraved there. And on the opposite side, you will see Lancer Tactical's blacked out trademarks engraved as well, which is very tastefully done. So the receiver again is full metal, but it is a standard M4 receiver style, which means the controls are simple. It's clean, it's traditional, simple, classic mayonnaise. Nothing overboard, nothing fancy. We wanted to keep it nice. Now, the biggest change to the Mark II is going to be the rail. You get this very tastefully done, clean, full metal M-Lock rail system with M-Lock on every position on the clock except for the 12 because you do get a monolithic upper rail. Look how much space is on this rail. There's so much room for accessories. You can literally mount whatever accessories you want onto the MGC4 Mark II. And at the very end of the barrel, you get a standard 14 millimeter counterclockwise threading for whatever muzzle devices you desire. Toward the end of the handguard, you will see there are QD sling points on the left and right hand side of the gun. I requested this specifically because I like QD, it makes life easier. And on the rail itself, you will see the Mail Gang trademark laser engraved on there. I'm trying to ride this line between classy and tacky, and I think it came out very well. Finishing off the external build of the MGC4 Mark II, we do have the enlarged trigger guard and the improved trigger, which is a flat trigger. Now, the Mark I did come with a flat trigger and it was very nice and you guys loved it. But with this one, it does have a larger face surface for the tip of your finger. So it does actually feel a little bit better when you are shooting it. And of course, we have the Lancer Tactical Gen 3 pistol grip with that nice grip angle. So you're not doing one of these on the field, bending the hell out of your wrist, okay? You know what I'm talking about. Lastly, we do have the clean Delta stop as well. This one, you know, standard buffer tube, six positions, completely adjustable, but it does have QD sling points on the stock. So you can run a full QD sling on the gun out of the box, no worries. But if you're still stuck in 2010 with your one point sling, there is a standard sling point at the end of the receiver. So with all of the external features summed up, the philosophy behind the MGC4 Mark II was to give you guys a stylish blank canvas to accessorize yourself and hit the field. You know, we wanted to give you something that looked very good and performed very well but you can express yourself as a player with the accessories that you need that fit your play style. And again, to hit the field running, the outdoor field. But if you're a giga chat like me that runs carbine length guns indoors, you know what to do. 
you do get a lot of goodies out of the box with the gun. First off, it's going to be the polymer flip up sights, the very nice Zion Arms muzzle brake, the 120 round familiar looking mid cap magazine that actually performs very well, but you also get a low power spring to take the guns indoors. You do get a couple of patches, the Zion Arms patch and the Lancer Tactical patch. You do get the standard user manual and the Zion Arms programming card, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Now that we've talked about the externals of the gun, let's talk about the internals. And let me tell you, it's pretty freaking good, okay? First off, we have an 18 to one steel gear set, a Delrin O-ring air nozzle, a full metal rack piston, a quick chain spring system, the Zion Arms Nebula MOSFET, which is programmable. We did upgrade the motor to a 25K motor to increase the trigger response and the rate of fire. And we included the rotary cell hop-up unit and the 6.03 inner barrel. Like I said, pretty freaking sweet. You know, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna show you. All right, we have the MGC4 Mark II gearbox taken apart in front of me. And the first thing that I notice is the liberal amount of grease. The factory did a very good job of applying grease where it needs to be without overdoing it. I've seen factories just throw a spoonful of grease in there and it just collects in the corners and gets really gunky and collects a lot of dirt. So shout out to Lancer Tactical's factory. They're doing a very good job on that. All right, now the compression set. We do have the standard version two tap and plate right there with a stainless steel spring. That's very nice. We do have a full cylinder, which is very good. The Delrin O-ring air nozzle uh, that does have the O-ring in there to help complete the seal and the full metal rack piston with a uh, polymer piston head, which is very nice. The cylinder head itself is a standard one O-ring air nozzle uh made of polymer as well so it's not too bad but let me test the compression on this really quick oh oh yeah that's that's like oh that's perfect that, wow that's actually very surprising considering that it only has one o-ring too this is actually that's concerning i hope this isn't shooting too hard out of the box uh but it's a good thing that it has a quick change uh spring set so yeah that's actually very very nice to see uh again very like damn near perfect compression set uh, with very good parts. Now the compression set isn't something that people talked about with the Mark I, it was already good, but it's good to see that the factory is making improvements on their own. All right, now let's get into the gear set, which is probably the parts that you are most curious about. Now this is an 18 and one steel gear set. And some of you guys might be wondering, why didn't you go with a higher ratio gear set? And there are gonna be some of you tech wizards out there. They're gonna be like, oh my, my one to one gear set performs perfectly. Yeah, but that probably cost you a lot of money and time to get that to work properly. 18 to one gear sets have proven to be the most reliable, especially with extended use. And we went with this specifically because it still gives you good performance, especially with the 25K motor that we added that we'll talk about a little bit more later. It performs very good. Now, we did do the math with high ratio gear sets and with the time that it takes to assemble the gun and the cost of the part itself, the extra cost would have been a lot more for the base gun than what we wanted. So the 18-1 gear set was definitely the way to go. Now, again, I did say this is a steel gear set and to prove that, take the magnet right there. Oop, the motor magnet sticks. <laughs> I was fumbling with it. Uh, spur gear, bevel gear, it's all steel. Uh, and they are very good. Again, paired with the 25K motor, you do get a very good trigger response and a good rate of fire without having too much of a power or pressure load on the gun, just draining the battery much more than it needs to be. Now moving on to the motor. This is a 25K motor from the factory. Now with the MGC4 Mark I, we did have a 19K motor. And the reason for that is because we were focusing solely on trigger response. We wanted to give you the best trigger response that you could have gotten out of the box. But some of you guys said that you wanted more of a balance, more balance to it with uh, a higher rate of fire. And we did a lot of testing with different motors and we found a 25K motor gives a good balance of trigger response. So you're not really lacking in terms of the felt responsiveness uh, in semi-auto, but you do get a dramatic increase in performance uh, in rate of fire. All right, now to talk about the electronics. Inside the MGC4 Mark II is going to be the Zion Arms Nebula MOSFET and the programming card, that which I talked, oh, hold on, was that in frame? No. 
There we go, perfect. <laughs> so, and the programming card that I mentioned earlier. Now, Design Arms Nebula MOSFET is such a dope MOSFET. It's so great. You see it in the Zion Arms PW9, the Zion Arms R15, the Lancer Tactical Gen 3, and now the MGC4 series. This is a programmable MOSFET with active braking out of the box. And for an out of the box MOSFET, it has proven itself time and time again. It's durable as hell. All the features are something that you want. It can be programmed to semi-auto only, two round burst, three round burst, four round burst, up to five round burst, and you can program a binary trigger instead of full auto as well, which is an added feature. Now, if you are questioning this MOSFET at all, make sure you test out or watch our Lancer Tactical Gen 3 torture test video where we put it through the extremes. We put a very high voltage LiPo battery uh, to this MOSFET and it survived very great and overall we wanted that performance to be added into the mgc4 mark ii and thank you again to zion arms for letting us use this mosfet because it is truly the the difference between some other gun and the performance that we get other features that i would like to talk about the gearbox itself is going to be the quick chain spring system i mentioned it earlier but this is a great feature to have especially if your field has very specific fps requirements you can easily change it and get it to the fps that you needed on the fly now this is a metal spring guide with the ball bearing washer set there to help the movement of the spring when actually shooting the gun makes it uh, a little bit more uh, easier on the gearbox itself and this gearbox actually has radius corners, which I really like. A lot of companies are starting to do this out of the box. Now, some of you guys might not understand the importance of this, but in a traditional gearbox where the compression set sits, if it is a traditional L corner, that corner is actually a stress point. When the piston is being driven forward uh, from the gun being fired, all the energy is put into the stress point here. And with a traditional corner, it actually can cause uh, cracking over time versus it being radius, it distributes the, the pressure, the power more evenly and makes it more reliable. The last thing that I wanted to talk about in the gearbox is going to be the stainless steel eight millimeter bearings. Some of you guys might be saying, Cisco, why didn't you go with bushings? Aren't bushings better? Yes but we did compare both bushings and bearings from the factory with our gear set and the motor, and it honestly didn't make a difference. So we ended up going with the bearings because it ends up keeping the cost lower for you guys. Now, if you did plan on doing a high performance build, bushings are definitely the way to go. But with how efficient our build is, you have more than enough reliability in these bearings. The MGC4 Mark II is chronoing in at about 390 to 400 feet per second with a 0.20 gram BB and a rate of fire of about 25 BBs per second with an 11.1 LiPo. All right, now that we've broken down everything about the MGC4 Mark II, it's time to go shoot this thing. Gonna need that, stock, oh, magazine. Oh, and the inner barrel. Come on. That's all I need. Wait, what? What are you doing? What? How are you gonna shoot this thing? All right, guys, we are out here at the range. It's good to be back. We have the MGC4 Mark II in my hands. Got it loaded up with 0.32 gram BBs because, you know, real world testing. And we have an 11.1 LiPo installed in here. So yeah, we have the target set up at about 100 feet. This is about the average engagement distance for an outdoor field. So yeah, let's just take a few shots, shall we? <laughs> easy landing each shot individually shooting very damn good the trigger response i've already shot it for, before from all of our other social media videos but crispy let's check that rate of fire though It's so stupid. It's so fast out of the box. This is ridiculous. But we are going to push it back to about 200, maybe 250 feet. See the maximum range that we can get out of this bad boy. But at 100 feet, easily landing every shot. All right, now we are at 250-ish feet. We are pretty far away. This is about the range where DMRs and, and uh, sniper rifles start to shine. But I want to see how the Mark II performs. So let's just go over here. Okay, so with the hop, I do have to arc it a little bit. 
but it is getting out there. You know what? I want to see if I can actually hop these BBs at that bridge. Oh yeah. Oh, it's getting out there easy. Let me see. It's like hitting the foot area. Okay. You can hear that it's hitting the bag below. So just adjusting the hop. And I'm surprised it's actually hopping these three twos all the way out there. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. 250 feet i'm actually really impressed and you know what i am dedicated on hitting this target so i have another magazine loaded up oh there we go oh there we go So at this range, it is a little bit more difficult, but again, we're at 250-ish feet. This is where sniper rifles really shine, but it's getting out there, which is very impressive. There was a little bit of misfeeding from my personal magazines. I actually left these loaded from uh, from our Texas trip, so it's been about a month. So <laughs> I don't care what you say, spring tension is definitely a thing, but I'm actually very surprised. This is very nice. Damn, I needed this in Texas. Just, it just, you can follow up each shot so easily. So even if I miss the first couple of shots, I can make follow-up shots and adjust so it's easier to hit the target. And then that full auto again. <laughs> it's too easy. Oh yeah, it's definitely reaching out there. Even, even with the hop up, there's still a little bit more play so I could really fine tune it if I wanted it to. But at 250 feet, that's very, very impressive. Was I lying? Was I lying when I said the Mark II performed great? No, I wasn't. As you can see from our test, it shot fantastically. And here's a comparison between the rate of fire between the Mark II and the Mark I. As you guys can see that there was an improvement in the rate of fire without a huge loss in trigger response. As you saw from the shooting test, range and accuracy, outstanding. Rate of fire and trigger response, excellent. As I've been saying, guys, the MGC4 Mark II is a blank canvas for you to do whatever you want with it. I'm talking standard rifleman, oh, it's there. CQB, oh, it can cut the corners. Competitive play, all that internal performance. Or unicorn inner barrel and bucking, a M4 SPR, or as Boaz would like to say, oh, it's hard to say, M4 DMR, <clears throat> quite possibly. All right, I know you guys are tired of me talking about the Mark II, so how much does it cost? What is the bottom dollar? Well, the Airsoft GI MGC4 Mark II is retailing for $315 at airsoftgi.com. And because of our amazing Wombo combo, you will get automatic free shipping and earn reward store credit. Guys, $315 for this full metal, beautiful airsoft gun with that amazing performance. Enough is said. This competes with the best of them. I'm just saying, I might be biased, but I think this is the best airsoft gun of 2023. I said it! I said it! In all seriousness, guys, we wanted to provide an extreme value for you in an airsoft gun. Everybody loves an airsoft gun that can punch above its weight. I'm not gonna say any brands, but there are definitely quite a few airsoft guns out there that the MGC4 Mark II can outshoot. All right, you guys, thank you for tuning in to our overview of the Airsoft GI MGC4 Mark II. Again, this has been an absolute dream of mine to build an airsoft gun. I got to talk to a factory on how to make an airsoft gun. Well, I didn't really talk to them. It was more like I typed my message out, Google Translate, send it. They reply, Google Translate. <laughs> Regardless, I got to have a say to the factory how an airsoft gun is made. And that's been absolutely insane. And even though I say I made an airsoft gun, you guys are more involved than you think. I have my opinions, but it's your guys' feedback that 
matters more. And we are constantly looking for feedback, player suggestions, what you guys say, and trying to implement that into the next model, and the, which is what we did. So guys, make sure you pick up the MGC4 Mark II right now at airsoftgi.com, a gun built by and for the male gang, the community that started it all. And hopefully this will be a gun that's here to stay instead of a limited time thing. So again, pick it up at airsoftgi.com, subscribe for more content, give us a thumbs up because we are trying to show the world that airsoft is a whole lot of fun and isn't bad. Other than that, guys, my name is Cisco, and I gotta go take a call because we're working on Mark III already. Cisco, please tell them Honey Badger. Yeah, please. yeah, boy. Honey, honey Badger, yeah. please. Okay.